So earlier this week, there was the Emacs world blowing up with this post that startup time doesn't matter. It was a post made by Bozidar Batsov. And I agree with him, startup time doesn't matter, video over. I'm just kidding. We're gonna do a little bit of a deep dive as to why or why not Emacs startup time matters or not. And we're gonna kind of see what his arguments are. And spoiler alert, my arguments are kind of along the same lines. So anyway, go read his post. It's very short. It sparked a little bit of a uh, discussion on the Emacs subreddit, which you can also go read and talk about, uh, see how people are talking about how they do or don't care about startup time, or they do or don't use the daemon, etc. And uh, I'll preface this post with, I also write posts online. So if you want to go read, if you're weird like me and you like to read things still, go check out my post. I'll post it in the, uh, in the show notes below. But let's get into it. So inevitably, people make the comparison between NeoVim and Emacs startup time when they want to edit a file, for example. And this is, I think, the biggest thing that comes up is NeoVim is so much quicker than Emacs to get up and going and starting to edit a file. So let's say I want to edit my ZSHRC. Classically, when you want to edit a file, you would type something like neovim.zshrc, for example. Let's just edit that file. And it's very quick, instantaneously opens, uh, no issues whatsoever. You can make that even faster with an alias and using something like ZSH uh, autocomplete. Oh my goodness, that's even quicker. I'm in that file right then and there, so quick, okay? Now, the comparison that somebody coming over from NeoVim to Emacs will make is that, well, if I want to do the same thing in Emacs, I'm going to type Emacs dot ZSHRC. I'll just complete it for argument's sake. And well, this doesn't always pop up for everybody. I run Emacs in X11 mode because it is a quicker uh, responsiveness in the GUI. We'll talk about that maybe in another video. But now I'm ready to go and I'm ready to edit my file. Here we go. Okay. So... That took like seven or eight seconds. That's too long, right? And immediately people are like, Emacs sucks. Why would I ever use this editor? Uh, NeoVim forever, okay? So, I mean, that's part of the story. But here's the thing is that you can also run Emacs with dash NW. So if you want to open it in the terminal, it's going to open a little bit quicker because it's not a GUI that's opening, but it's still going to be like five, six, seven seconds, right? There I am. Now I can edit this file and just ignore the thing at the bottom. That is just a little error that I have to fix in my uh, config or even just take it out entirely. Okay. So first things first is that people are like, well, Emacs is super slow. I'm never using it. This is just silly. Okay. Whatever. And I'll stop the video right there because people are going to be like, well, inevitably you're in it. .el is like way too big. There's something wrong that your Emacs is taking five to six seconds to start. Mine takes less than a second. You need to optimize. And we'll do that in future videos. But inevitably, even if you do optimize, NeoVim is going to be faster than Emacs to open a file 95% of the time. And this is the crux of the argument is that people are comparing or trying to compare apples to apples but what we're actually doing here is we're comparing an apple to a dragon fruit. They're not the same thing. We're not in, in the same class of fruit at that point. That's not what Emacs is. Emacs is more akin to your operating system environment than it is to a text editor. So the shift in mentality comes when you realize that, for me at least, Emacs opens immediately when I start up my computer. It lives on workspace number one. Here it is. It is always here. Um, and there it is, right? But if I want to edit a file, then I have to go here and I have to go find my recent files and there it is. Okay. It's a little bit quicker, right? Because the startup time is taken out of the equation because Emacs is always up. Now, Emacs for me takes about, I want to say, five to six seconds to start up when I first open up the GUI in my computer. Why I don't think that matters is a couple of reasons. So first things first is that it only has to open up once. As soon as it's open once on my screen, 
all of my other processes call something called the Emacs client. They, a daemon is started when the initial Emacs frame is opened that all future Emacs frames literally call from that daemon. It's called Emacs client and every single command that I essentially preface with my, uh, my keyboard sh shortcuts, et cetera, all use Emacs client to open new frames, windows, uh, whatever. Right. So whenever I am making a call, I'm actually making a call to that initial Emacs instance. That was essentially instantaneous. That was actually quicker than going into my terminal emulator and going into NeoVim. Okay. Um, so that's part of the comparison. The second part of the comparison is that let's say you're using Emacs on the server. You can use something called Tmux, which if you are a developer, you're probably familiar with that you start Emacs in a Tmux pane. You leave that Tmux pane open ad perpetuity forever. And you just go about editing files on that server with that Tmux instance. Emacs lives as long as that Tmux instance is open. So your startup time matters once and it never matters again because you have that Emacs instance open forever. You're starting to see how the comparison doesn't really hold any water because you're comparing a text editor to an environment. Here's why Emacs startup time doesn't matter for me. Because Emacs replaces a modicum of different applications and programs on my computer that I just don't care about the startup time anymore. In my post, I actually say exactly what Emacs replaces in my computer. So it replaces a music player, a Git client, a my feed reader. It replaces any IRC clients. It replaces my file manager. It replaces a text editor. It replaces PDF and ebook readers. It replaces a note-taking and calendaring system. It is my organizational and project management tool. It is my email client, my REST client, my SSH interface, my ter terminal emulator. You see where I'm going with this? Emacs replaces all of these apps on the screen. So I don't really care about the startup time because what I'm actually starting up when I start up Emacs is my computing environment. I'm starting up the place where I do 90% of the work that I do on a computer on a day-to-day -day basis. I open it once, it lives forever on workspace number one. And from there, startup time, not really a consideration any further. And I mean, the, the point that's made by the original author is that you can use the Emacs daemon, which is exactly what I was saying, is that your first instance of Emacs is then tethered to all subsequent instances of Emacs. For me, I use it for floating frames. We'll call them in Emacs lingo, like the windows that are popped up, they're, they're called frames in Emacs lingo. But to open another instance to edit something else or whatever, I mean, you could absolutely do it that way. I don't know. It all depends on your workflow. So does startup time for Emacs matter? It depends on how you use it. If you use it as a drop in replacement to NeoVim, uh, I don't think you're ever gonna be happy with it. And I wasn't until I understood that Emacs is not just my text editor. It becomes the entire environment that I do everything in a computer with. And it becomes this portable environment I can take anywhere I wanna go. How do you use Emacs? I know that my startup time is actually probably a little bit high for a uh, Emacs installation. So if you have any tips, I will also post my dot files in the comments, in the show notes below. Go take a look at my literate config and help me make it a little bit faster because that would be cool. Let's shave seconds off of my startup time so that it really doesn't matter anymore. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I talk about Emacs and first principles and all that sort of thing. So if you like that, stick around, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if you want to support this channel, go check out my book. It is linked in the show notes below. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. We will catch you in the next video.